everyone. Um, I think most of you know me. Um, my name is Klassman. I'm Libby Jacobs. I'm a senior. Um, I have, this is um, a really bittersweet day for me. It's my last day of high school ever. Um, no finals next week or anything. So um, it's a really great way to end my year. Um, this project has been a wonderful end to my year. I've been working on it since January. I'm really excited to tell you all about it right now. So, um, so that's my dog. I really love her. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, so um, before I like really tell you about the project, I just want to say like I'm I've been blown away by the support I've received for this project and just in general from the island community. Um, you know, I see like all my teachers up there, my favorite teachers, and my parents, and my sister, and all of my friends, and it's it's really wonderful to see um, all of that support. I could not have done this project without all of you. Um, this was, I, I, I created this book, but other people wrote the things that are in it, so I, I can't really say I wrote the book, and also it could never have come to like, become like a real book here if um, I hadn't had the help of so many people, so I just want to say thank you. So, um, the other thing is that I'm going to tell you about the project, and then I'm going to have um, two people who wrote an essay come up and read. Um, before they do that, I just want to say that a lot of the stories that people gave me and their personal beliefs were um, very vulnerable and very personal. And I'm, I'm honored to even be trusted with such personal details and to be allowed to publish them. Um, so I just ask that if anyone comes up here and shares um, their essay, it's most likely going to be very personal. And I, I just want you to um, you know, maintain that confidentiality and just don't approach them directly about it. Um, I wrote this in my book, but I'd rather you like do something kind for them for the person whose essays touch you. Um, and I I thank you for, for doing that. So let's begin. OK, so I read This I Believe, which is an NPR book um, of personal philosophies um, from you know everyday people to you know famous people. I think Oprah Winfrey, Winfrey wrote one. Um, and so that's, that's what it is. And I read it probably exactly a year ago. Um, um, at the time, I was really struggling um, in general. I was in a pretty bad place. Um, and I was given the book, This I Believe. Um, and something about it was just really hopeful for me. Um, it, it, it just detailed so many people's lives. And you wouldn't know when you saw them on the street, if you said hi to them. You wouldn't know that they had all these other things going on in their life and like what brought them to this place. And so it was really hopeful to me to see that other people have struggled and other people have gone through it and learned something. And it was just, it was inspiring. So I read it cover to cover in like a day or two. Um, and I had, I didn't immediately think like I want to do this for my senior project. It was just kind of a slow development. Um, my mom actually gave me the idea, so thanks mom. And <laughs> I, and um, and so then it turned into this We Believe Martha's Vineyard. There is a copyright thing for this, I believe. That's why I had to change the, the name, but they gave me permission for everything else. So first thing I did was I made up an invitation. Um, and so that's this on the right. And I just tried to outline what I'm doing and, you know, try not to make it daunting to people who don't want to write like a three-page thing or whatever and are, are kind of nervous about spreading their ideas, but I um, I chose the people, so, well, I've, I've lived here for all 18 years, I'm going to turn 18 in a few months, and the people who have, like, shaped my life, or have, in, like, some way, like, I just felt like I could trust them, or something about them just resonated with me. I gave them invitations, there were about 50, um, and I wasn't sure how many were going to agree, um, I thought maybe half, maybe a quarter, and I ended up receiving 42 essays. And that, that's just incredible to me. 
that so many people would do it. Now, granted, I chose people who who know me really well and who I love, and so um, that was awesome. So I started getting essays in immediately. Um, and while I was beginning this project, um, I was reading a kind of like a self-help book, but like not really your typical self-help book. And it was by Piero Ferrucci, who's this guy. He is a um, Italian psychoanalyst, and he, I had never heard of him before, but he wrote a book called The Power of Kindness, um, which is right here. It's called, it's like The Unexpected Benefits of Leading a Compassionate Life. So I found that when I was out in California um, early this spring, and I read it while I was making the project, and I like couldn't put it down because it was so inspiring. And so many of like the arguments about like what it is to be kind just resonated with me. And that was kind of part of my whole project too. Like a theme of it is giving and kindness and like not expecting anything in return, just like being a good person to be a good person. And so I incorporated a bunch of my favorite quotes from the book throughout um, this we believe. The book, which you'll see if you look at it. So that was also my inspiration. Um, so a huge part of the project was like communication. I definitely like learned a lot of communication skills because um, 42 people is a lot of people. That's including myself. But like I had to make a Google spreadsheet, as you can see. Um, I like categorized it by you know group of people in my life, so like teachers and like alumni and. You know, my, my friends and young people. Um, um, oh, yeah. I, mentioned, I also um, tried to get like a wide range of ages. So I asked um, two little girls that I babysit who I absolutely adore. Like, and I, I, I um, one of them was Hadley Myers, and I, she's six, and I took her out for hot chocolate and interviewed her, and I just like voice recorded it, and it was so cute. And so I typed it all up. So I tried to get like a wide range of community members. So the other thing is that the book isn't just um, like essays in random order or anything. I um, tried to put my own like twist on parts of it. So I um, read all the essays through, and I kind of thought about like what is the uniting theme throughout them all, and what have I gotten from this? And I discovered a lot of things, wrote a lot of points, and had the help of um, many different writing teachers and everything. And I came up with a preface. Um, it was just my introduction to the book that I hope kind of unifies the whole thing and gives a better sense of what the whole project is about. So the second thing I did, I um, asked everybody to give me a picture of their hand, and it could be one hand, two hands, like with an object or like anything that symbolized their essay and the theme of their essay. And so you can see, um, these are just a few of them. That's Olson and Kate Howitt with their thumbs up. And that's Sarah Moore with their hands. Um, Hadley Myers, as I was saying. Chris Ehring, as you can see. <laughs> and, um, like they're pretty like indicative of the people's personalities, I think. And I, I just thought it was funny. Um, that's Caleb I think, like and Ben Davey, which and that says go live. Um, this is, I want to say Matt Malowski, I think, and Dan Sharkovitz, um, with his poetry book. So it was it was really wonderful to get all of the hands. They were all really unique. Um, I incorporated them into the book by like I put them at the top of each essay. Um, if you can see. So they're just little pictures and they're black and white. But I really liked that as a kind of introduction to each one. That's that. And then, so then, like, it just started coming together. Like, at first, it was just like a Google Docs folder of mine, and I had all the essays in it with the people's names. And I was like, oh my goodness, I have like a month and a half, and I need to, I want to make a real book. And so, um, I used the online publish, self publishing company called Digipod. Um, my dad handled a lot of it, thank goodness. Um, I don't really know much about that kind of stuff. But so, again, like I had so much help from my parents, but my dad um, helped me like get the format ready, and then my mom like just started pasting them all in uh, while I was in school when I didn't have any time. So like it was really, really helpful. And next thing I know, like I come home and I'm finalizing everything, and then she prints it out, and I have this like manuscript of my book. Um, and that was when I realized like this is going to be a real project, and um, but it was just 
kind of incredible to me. Um, so it looked really thick. It was really thick, but that's because it wasn't double-sided there. Um, it turned out to be something like 200 pages. Yeah, about 200 pages. Um, so we sent it off online to this company, and I think they're in Michigan, and um, this is just a picture from their website, and like it went through all the presses, and then they blow them all up and put them in the boxes. And then, I want to say two and a half weeks later, they, they were supposed to come on a Wednesday, but I got home on a Monday night, and they came, and it was like the most exciting thing ever. <laughs> like the UPS man came up with like all these boxes on my driveway, and I ran outside, and it was really, it was a nice moment. So, and, um, so this is the like online front cover and back cover and spine that I had to send to them. Um, it turned out great. I don't like that I have my picture there, but it's fine. It looks professional. Um, and so, um, yeah, so it turned out looking looking really cool. Um, so this is me when I first opened the box. I like laid on my bedroom floor and just started like, I don't know, looking through all of them. I was just in awe. Like I was texting pictures to Amy and anyway. So, um, and then, and then he was here and the next day I spent like all of the school day just handing them out. And what was really inspiring was people's reactions. I didn't realize like the impact I had on people until well, I know like writing the essays was a huge like exercise for a lot of people and like was really um, maybe a hard thing to do. I think it was different for everybody, but um, receiving the book, I could see like how much it meant. And you know, I had people who just like burst into tears when I gave it to them. And and that that was just like astounding to me. It really like touched me, and so it was a good day that day. Um, then two nights ago on Wednesday night, I sold um, the copies. Um, I should talk about. So I published two hundred copies, and the school really generously paid for half of it. So the whole publishing cost was like about nine hundred, a little more than nine hundred dollars. Um, the school paid for half, so five hundred thirty dollars of it which was wonderful, and that came out of the Student Activities um, Fund, which is part of like a branch of like the Student Council Government thing. Um, so that was great. So I'm selling them for $10 each, and I am giving all the proceeds back to the Student Fund um, for next year, and hopefully next year's senior projects, you guys will be able to use that money. Um, I still do have a bit of a problem with selling them, because I... I just feel like the entire like message of the book is just to like give and kindness and like um, selling them is more of like a I don't know it just gives me a different feeling so like it really wasn't my favorite to sell them and I think I am just gonna sell them today and maybe like one other time to people who I know and people who live on island um, I could give it to a bunch of grapes and they could like summer people could read it but I think it's just so personal and it's so vineyard that I almost want to keep it to on the vineyard, um, but I do have like something like a hundred copies left, and so that's that's exciting that I still have more to sell, and hopefully I can pay the school back in full. That's that, and I so that's the end of my slideshow. Um, I'm sure I left a lot of things out. It was a really long process. There was so much editing going on, and um, before I didn't go any further, like. I just want to say my two mentors were Christine Ferrone, who's an English teacher here, and uh, Clark Myers, who is a good, really good friend of mine, um, and I babysit his children, and I adore the entire family. So um, they were so, so helpful. Like, even though we weren't meeting all the time, because we were all so busy, um, like, I just knew that they had my back, and, like, anything I needed, they are going to be there. Um, we did meet a couple times, like we went to Napsnook and sat down and had some coffee and like went through all of the um, essays and edited. And that was so helpful to have like two other sets of eyes reading them and like making sure there weren't any like silly errors that like I put in or the person put in or, or whatever. Um, and everything was clear. And so that took a long time and, and I really appreciate that they took their time to do that. I know they're really busy people. Um, so. Now, I'm going to have um, Clark Myers come up and read his uh, poem he wrote for the book. And after that, I'm going to have Ben Davey come up and read his essay. Um, 
I'd like to introduce them, just how I know them and everything, as I did in the book. Um, in the book, there's like little blurbs introducing people and how I'm related to them, because I felt like that was necessary to say, like, oh, this is my teacher, or this is my friend, or whatever. Um, so, Ben Davey, I have been in class with him since kindergarten. Um, we went to the Tisbury School together, and we, he's just one of those people that maybe we don't see each other that much. We have a couple classes together this year. We've had a couple in the past four years. But I always feel like I can count on him for anything, you know, and, and he's so approachable, and he, I just feel like we've known each other forever. I mean, we kind of have, but like, I feel like I can trust him with, with anything, um, even if we don't communicate that often or hang out or whatever. And so I really do love Ben Davey, um, and I'm honored that he's going to read his story. Um, Clark Myers is someone who I really deeply respect. He um, and his family live right down the road from me, and they're just wonderful. I drive by their house every day, turning onto my road, and the kids are always out playing. It's some like adorable family moment, and it's just really wonderful. Clark himself is just like he's just he just exudes for me like this tranquility of some kind. Like just like he's just so calming, and like if I go over to babysit, we'll just sit there and talk, and like. I could just talk to him for a really long time because he's just he's just really wonderful. Um, and so without further ado, Clark Myers. So um going first, that's good. <laughs> But I have to leave. Um, I have an appointment at night, and I apologize to all the readers because. Um, but I've read all the essays. Um, I felt, <clears throat> you know, I got very emotional often reading this stuff. It's amazing. Um, being Libby's mentor out of school was like the easiest job ever. Um, <laughs> she had such a clear vision of what she wanted to do, and uh, and she certainly did it. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say is being a poet, it's always good to read from the book that you're in. Um, so I, I appreciate that. The poem's called Recovery that I wrote. Um, oh, but I don't, I don't write essays. Like I, I write poems because they're a lot shorter. A lot less words, so um, it's really because I'm lazy. And this poem starts with a quote from Mary Oliver. <clears throat> Tell me your despair, yours. And I'll tell you mine. Recovery. <clears throat> when you become sick of being sick and tired, tired of blackouts and loss, when you face despair as deep as a moonless night, starless and without hope, seek out others like you who have reached the same emptiness. And listen to them as a deer listens to a sudden noise in the deep forest. Tell them how you regained color, sunlight, soft and gold through leaves dappling the ground. Tell each other of your return to hope so that they and you can begin to see how you both have been changed by grace by the simple act of sharing, for a problem shared is a problem packed. Hey guys, um, I'm going to sit down because I'll be spending up all day. Um, I'm sorry for looking like a highlighter. I'm an hour and a half late to work, so this is awesome. <laughs> so, I wrote an essay called Do More. So, I'm just going to read from that. Um, I went on, on a spontaneous trip to Washington, D.C. this past February vacation to visit a friend who works for Senator Bernie Sanders in his Capitol office. I booked the flights a week before vacation. I knew the cherry blossoms would be out early because of how freakishly warm this winter was, and the political season would be kicking into gear, and I just had to see the city. 
The longing feeling was like being a little kid at the convenience store with my parents, and I just had to have that chocolate bar. I sort of had a plan about how to get to Logan Airport, what I wanted to do in DC, and how to get back from Reagan Airport. All I had to do was take the plunge, buy the tickets, and make up the rest as I went. It's not an adventure unless it's 50% improvisation. My favorite quote of John Wooden is, if you're not making mistakes, then you're not doing anything. I'm positive that a doer makes mistakes. The trip was everything my impulsive self had wanted. Warm weather, cherry blossoms, and meeting some very cool political figures. Then I accidentally got lost. I took the yellow line instead of the green line out of Union Station and ended up outside the Pentagon before I looked up from my phone and realized what happened. Oh well. I have no regrets about that mix-up for several reasons, but especially because it was how I met Yusuf. I remember getting off the metro and finding him playing his well-worn acoustic guitar at the top of the escalator. There were a few people surrounding him and listening, so I stopped to listen too. He had a sign explaining he had come from the Middle East as a refugee and was trying to do what he loved to take his mind off his past. I instantly became grateful for the life I led, but also for being lost that day. I bought his CD for $5, and I've listened to every track at least 10 times by now. Of course, I also learned a very important city lesson that day. Always check the train's route before getting on. Which is exactly what I should have done the very next morning before getting on the red line instead of the blue line headed towards the Smithsonian. There wasn't anything bad about that mix-up either, and I walked a measly eight miles across the city exploring neighborhoods on the way to the Smithsonian. Sometimes the coolest things you'll see are found by accident, and that's what I love about mistakes. If you don't embrace them, you'll never have any fun. Life is experience-based, and only you control your experiences. I've lived by this philosophy forever, since my late grandfather ingrained it into my brain. He did everything he wanted to do in life. There are few people I admire more. If there's something I want to do, even just a little bit, I do my best to try to attempt to do it. I've flown planes, worked with kids, volunteered through different charities, enrolled in the EMT course, and gone on spontaneous trips, and even just driven up to Manapsha to see the sunset for no other reason other than because I just had to see it. The more I'm able to do, the more enriched my life becomes. So I challenge all of you to help someone. Go on a trip. Step outside your comfort zone. Never sit still, because there's always one more adventure to be had. I'll return to John Wooden one more time for this parting thought. Be true to yourself, help others, and make each day your masterpiece. Simply put, to live more, you need to do more. This I believe. I really appreciate it. Bye, Clark. Thank you. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to take any questions you have about my project. Um, but before I do that, um, I just want to tell everyone that after the questions, I'm going to have like kind of an open reading um, up here. And if and I know there's a lot of essayists out there. Um, if you have your book or if you want to grab one from there. Um, I would love if you read your essay, but I completely understand if you feel like it's too vulnerable or personal or, or whatever. Um, but I just want to make sure that anyone who wants to read gets to read, and I think that every, every essay is so unique and wonderful. Um, so prepare yourself if you're doing that. And um, I'll take questions now. What was the most difficult part of it? Um, the most difficult part was just, like, the communication thing and, like, getting everything together. Like, 41 people with crazy busy lives and so many teachers and, like, um, like, kind of just reminding everyone that I need photos and, like, a hand photo and I need a title and I need them to, like, look over the essay and I'm sharing it with them on Google Docs and, like, email's not working or something. There's always something. And, and so it was a lot of communication. And I'd say that was like the hardest part, just in terms of making sure I had everything. Um, but apart from that, it was, it was pretty smooth sailing. Would you write another book? Um, I do hope to write a book in some time in the future, probably um, different than this. But um, I'm going to Hamilton College next fall, and I'm really excited. I'm double majoring in philosophy and psychology and hopefully um, minoring in education. So I hope to go into education and 
definitely writing would be a huge part of that. Um, so we'll see. I'm not sure. So I think that there are a couple things. First, um, I wish like I could ask more people, even though you know 42 is a lot. But I, there's so many more people who I see every day. I'm like, oh, I wish I had to ask them to write an essay because they're like, there's something about them that's like they definitely have a story to tell. Um, so that's that's probably my one regret. Um, everything else is like, you know, there's like little formatting things in the book that like only I notice, but. Um, other than that, that's, that's it. Yeah. There are about five of these inside the week series, so you could continue on. Yeah. <laughs> that would be really cool. Libby, you mentioned vulnerability as a commonality amongst some of the essays. Were there any other themes that emerged, uh, perhaps unexpectedly? Um, I think. Definitely vulnerability was like the uniting one, just the courage that it took to to do this. Um, but everyone who wrote an essay had real like meaning behind it. Um, I, I think it's just that they have something about their presence that is really um, like just exudes strength of some kind because they've they something is gone on is not necessarily bad. Um, you know, if you look at the little the little girls I interviewed, they but they have so much personality. Like everyone's just exuding like humanness. I don't know, just like some sort of imperfection and love and, and anything like that. I don't know if I can really pinpoint it. But yeah. Yeah. Identity must be a tough thing when you're dealing with someone's you know, personal work. How did you decide what to edit and not edit? Yeah, so that was also a challenge. Um, I read each essay through carefully, um, got kind of like the gist of what they want to say, um, and then went back and just corrected like grammatical things or spelling or punctuation and maybe like switch the order of words to make it clearer. But I really tried to not change the meaning of what they were trying to say. Um, Definitely, like, wasn't gonna take out a paragraph of someone's, you know, really personal story, of course. Um, so it was just little things like that. Um, it was a thousand word limit, right? <coughs> yeah. So it was. There were a few people who <laughs> who went over, right. and um, at first I was thinking like. How am I going to fit this into a book? You know, I wasn't—I had, hadn't really seen the format page yet, so I wasn't sure if there was a limit for the pages and everything. It turned out totally fine, any length that there was. Um, yeah, so there there was a limit initially, but I just kind of forgot about it. <laughs>
Um, I've shown it to some people that don't even have anything to do with high school. And I think, I have a feeling that your book is going to serve the same purpose for other people. Yeah. I think it's really a gift for everybody. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you.